Hey there, ever heard of The Last House on the Left? It's a 1972 movie that's packed with some funny, shocking, and sad facts. So keep watching this video. The Last House on the Left features some classic Hollywood actors. Who was your favorite? This movie has impacted many lives. Do you have a personal story about how it has inspired or impacted you? Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories, so get ready for some surprises and emotions. It's all coming your way in the last house on the left. Ever watched an old horror movie and felt like something was missing? That was my experience with a certain classic flick. It's got its place in horror history, but it didn't quite hit the mark for me. Directed by Wes Craven, it revolves around a group of sadistic criminals who terrorize two teenage girls. Despite its reputation, the film's age shows. The effects and storytelling might have been shocking back then, but now they feel outdated and lackluster. The characters don't fare much better. There are the girls, their parents, the criminals, and a couple of cops, but none of them are given enough depth. This lack of development makes it hard to connect with their struggles or feel invested in their story. Even pivotal moments like the parents' revenge fall flat without that emotional connection. As for the tension and claustrophobia the movie tries to build, it doesn't quite stick the landing. The pacing feels off, and while you can see what the director was going for, it just doesn't come together well. In the end, while this movie might be a must-watch for horror buffs wanting to delve into the genre's history, it's not one I'd readily recommend to someone looking for a scare. There are just too many flaws holding it back from being truly engaging. The ads for this movie had a narrator saying, Keep telling yourself. Then, an audience chanting over and over again, It's only a movie it was distributed by American International Pictures in 1972. It marked David Hess's film debut. In the 1980s, the American video versions contained additional text after the film had ended, reading coming soon to a theater near you. From the producers of Last House on the Left and the director of Friday the 13th Part V, The Last House on the Left, Part Roman 2. You won't believe your eyes. No sequel ever materialized unless you consider A Nightmare on Elm Street as such. In a chilling tale of survival and vengeance, a group of strong women faces unthinkable horrors in a film that has seen its fair share of controversy. Initially deemed too intense for audiences in 1974, it was banned multiple times in the UK, resurfacing in 1984 and 2000 to face the same fate. However, perseverance paid off, and after undergoing edits for a video release in 22, it finally gained approval for an uncut version in March 2008. Interestingly, the producer's personal touch can be seen in the opening scene, where his own station wagon makes an appearance. It's a story of resilience, censorship, and eventual acceptance, showcasing the power of determination in the face of adversity. In this movie, the villain Krug, known for his smarmy demeanor and penchant for taunting and torturing his victims, bears a striking resemblance to the character Kruger from Nightmare on Elm Street. Both share a similar modus operandi and fate, meeting their end at the hands of vengeful parents who bypass the law. It's almost as if Nightmare on Elm Street could be seen as a continuation of The Last House on the Left, given Wes Craven's direction in both. Martin Cove, famous for his role in Karate Kid, saw his character parodied in Sidekicks. David Hess, Fred J. Lincoln, and Mark Scheffler added authenticity to their roles by improvising much of their dialogue. These improvisations helped shape the gritty realism of the film. In the realm of gritty cinema, one actor's contribution stands out vividly. He's known for his roles in cult classics, adding depth to tales of vengeance and survival. In a defining moment of his career, he played a significant role in a 1972 film, originally titled Night of Vengeance. The movie delved deep into the harrowing journey of parents seeking retribution for their children's suffering. His portrayal captivated audiences, resonating with raw human emotions and primal instincts. The theme of seeking justice struck a chord with viewers influencing future works by notable directors. The filmmaker behind this unsettling narrative, known for his mastery of horror, revisited similar themes in subsequent projects. He explored the depths of human fear and the quest for vengeance in iconic movies like A Nightmare on Elm Street and Red Eye. The actor's performance in the film left a profound mark on audiences, solidifying his status as a skilled performer capable of immersing himself in challenging roles. His contribution to the success of the movie cannot be overstated, shaping the genre for years to come. Reflecting on his performance and the thematic depth of the film offers insight into its enduring impact. It serves as a reminder of the power of storytelling and the lasting impression it leaves on audiences. This analysis sheds light on the actor's pivotal role and the profound resonance of the narrative. 
During the mid to late 1980s and early 1990s, Martin Cove was a well-known television spokesman for King Cobra Beer. He famously said, don't let the smooth taste fool you. However, in more recent years, he has sworn off alcohol. The director of The Last House on the Left died on August 30th, 2015, the 43rd anniversary of the film's release. Mark Scheffler, who portrayed Junior, revealed in an interview that he grabbed Sandra Peabody, held her over a cliff, and threatened to throw her off if she didn't reach the level of desperation needed for a scene she was having trouble doing. Scheffler stated she wasn't getting the scene. She wasn't at the anxiety level that she needed to be. So, we'd done it I don't know how many times and everybody was getting annoyed. So, I said to Wes, give me a minute with her. What I did was, you can't see it in the shot, but I took her over to the cliff and I put her over the cliff and just grabbed her and said, if you don't get this fucking scene right now, I'm gonna drop you and Wes will shoot it and we'll get a different scene, but it'll work because you'll be fucking mangled. Originally intended as a hardcore pornographic film with all actors and crew fully committed to the project. However, during filming, the director decided to rewrite the script, eliminating explicit content. According to Jeremy Rain, during the making of documentary, she experienced an unsettling encounter while walking on a sidewalk. A mother and her young son spotted her, and the boy pointed at Rain, expressing his dislike by saying, I hate you. The mother corrected him, saying he hated Sadie Rain's character, but the boy insisted, no mommy, I hate her. Wes Craven, the director, borrowed Mary Collingwood's surname from his high school. In the making of a certain movie, Martin Cove was originally considered for a big tough guy role, but he chose to play a funny deputy instead. He thought David Hess would be a better fit. Fred J. Lincoln helped plan out the violent scenes, and Martin Cove talked about his acting in a book called Character King's Hollywood's Familiar Faces discussed the art and business of acting by Scott Voison. David Hess got the role, even though he had to wear extra padding. He was even asked to do the music for the movie. The movie, known for its scary scenes and characters, owes a lot to the decisions made by the people working on it. This shows how everyone worked together to make the movie really scary and memorable. Shot in just 21 days, the film faced the Italian censorship visa 60-26-36 delivered on a warm June day in 1973. Martin Cove, who portrayed a character in The Karate Kid Parchment 2, found himself in an unexpected predicament during filming. In the heat of a fight scene, his hand met a prop window with such force that it shattered, causing him several injuries. Despite the pain, he remained committed to his role and continued filming, showcasing his dedication to the craft. This incident became a testament to the resilience and determination of actors in the face of challenges on set. The Last House on the Left, a groundbreaking film of its time, not only pushed the boundaries of cinema, but also highlighted the sacrifices made by those involved in its creation.